Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're still in the realm of statics. We have a problem here on forces, decomposition of forces. Uh, it's a basic problem, nothing fancy about it. Interestingly here we have the option of using the force triangle or not, so we're going to solve it both ways. And the idea here, the main purpose is for you to think about whether it makes sense to use a force triangle or not, when it's going to be helpful, when it's not going to be helpful. This is a clear situation in which there's only one winner. One way that's super hard, one way that's easy. So let's start by using the composition of forces, and then we'll do the next part in which we do force triangle. Problem statement. A hoist trolley is subjected to a three force show, to the three forces shown. Knowing that alpha is 40 degrees, determine A, the required magnitude of the force P if the resultant force of the three forces is to be vertical, and B, the corresponding magnitude of the resultant. So here we have three forces on the hoist, and basically it's asking us, okay, what do I need P to be? What's the magnitude of P? So how many pounds do I need P to be? if I want this to be a resulting force as a vertical force. Now, note that the only two vertical forces we have, P has no vertical component. Um, there's a vertical component here of this 200, and there's a vertical component here of the 400, okay? So if we want this to be a vertical force as a result, of, we want the resultant to be pointing downwards here because there's no force pointing upwards, and therefore what we need to do is eliminate any forces on the horizontal axis, right, on the x-axis. So for that to be the case, we need to note that we have a 200 component pointing rightwards, so, you know, on the same, in the same direction as P, and we have the 400 component, 400x and 200x, the 400x pointing on the different direction, okay? So if we want this to be only vertical, we need these to cancel each other off, and then if they don't cancel each other out, then we need P to come along and do the difference, right? So in other words, what we're saying here is, I need the sum of forces in X to be zero, and the forces that we have, if I'm considering this way to be positive, forces that I'm gonna have acting are gonna be the 200 X component plus P minus the 400 X component, and I want this to be zero. Okay, so in other words, I want P to be the difference between the 400X component minus the 200X component. Okay, so let's do that. And to do that, it's going to be super simple. All I'm going to do is, all I'm going to do is going to, I'm going to get rid of this. All I'm going to do is create um, triangles here to decompose the forces. So I'm going to have my 200 over here. I'm going to decompose this into two. It's going to be 200 pounds. Let me grab this. We put it down here. Let me note that this angle here is 40, right? Alpha is 40, so 40 degrees. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. I'm going to do, and note I'm just making it a bit larger so that's easier for us to follow along. A bit larger than the drawing. So here's my 400. And here you are. So this is 400 over here. This is also going to be 40 degrees for my angle. And here we have it. So here we have our two triangles. Okay. And what I'm looking for here is the vertical component of the 200, the vertical component of the 400, the horizontal component of the 400 and the horizontal component of the 200. And how do I go about getting this? Well, simple tri trigonom trigonometry, right? So I have the 40 here. I know the sine is the opposite hypotenuse. So this is going to be super easy. Sine of 40 degrees will be equal to my, let's give this a better name. Um, let's call this one here A and this one here B. This is going to be my force AX, and here I'm going to have my force AY. Okay, so sine of 40 will be force X over the 200. Right, so force 
AX divided by 200 pounds. So note the only unknown here is really the force the X. So we can solve it for that. And the cosine, right? So the cosine is going to be the adjacent. But we're going to have this, this guy here, which means that my sine of, oops, my cosine of 40 degrees will be my force A on the Y direction divided by the same 200 on the hypothesis. And once again, my only unknown is force. So this means that my force AX, the force that I have here will be 128.56 pounds, obviously, in the same unit. I'm just multiplying by a ratio, which is my sine of 40. And here on the cool side, I have 153.21. Hundred and fifty three point twenty one pounds. All right. Note the following. These are decompositions of the original two hundred force. So these have to be smaller. Always gonna be multiplying by a number between zero and one. Therefore they have to be smaller. If you're doing this and you find a larger number, you did it incorrectly. It's a simple math mistake, but you know it, right? You look at the results like oops, that cannot be right. I want to check on it, and you know it, and you go back and you fix it, okay? So remember what you're doing so that you don't do these silly things. Okay, so now I have the two decomposition of the forces there. I'm going to do exactly the same thing over here. I'm going to have, uh, let's do different colors. I'm going to have force of B X over here, and I'm going to have force of B Y over here. And here I have the sine of 40 was going to be B Y hypotenuse, which is my 400, okay? So... F, B, Y, oops, sine of 40 degrees is equal to F, B, Y divided by 400 pounds, which means that force B on the Y direction is 257.12. Let me go ahead and put it down here. 257.12 pounds. We can go ahead and put this down here so we're not invading the space. Okay, and then um, last but not least, the cool sine of 40 is going to be the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. So the cosine of 40 is FBX divided by 400 pounds, and therefore FBX equals. 306.42 306.42 degree, uh, by the degrees, sorry pounds beautiful, beautiful so what does that mean? well, if we go back to what we decided was if we want to find out P P is pointing to the right and we want the whole thing to cancel out basically what we want is the difference between the two right, so the difference between the 400 X component that we're now calling F B X in the two fire, which we'll call it F A X. Okay, so in other words, check out what's going on. We have, if we call the hoist there, we have the, how much was this? Um, 153 pounds pointing to the right. We have, from the 400, we have uh, 300 and Oh, sorry, 128. 128 pointing to the right, and we have 306 pointing to the left. Okay, so you can see that between these two, this one wins, and it's going to win by 170-ish. So if we do the, the result in here, it's going to be this way, 170-ish, and that's kind of what we need P to be, right? We need P to be exactly that, so that if P comes along, then it cancels out this resultant, and the, and the resultant becomes zero. And that's exactly what we came up with. We said, okay, P, P needs to be the difference between my F, P, X, and my F, uh, A, X, which happened to be 306.42 minus 100 and, what was the other one? 28. Or wait, 
56, 0.56, and therefore P is equal to 177.86 pounds. All right, beautiful. So just decompose the forces, and then we found out what P needs to be so that the resultant is zero on the X direction. So then we go into part B, which asks us, okay, what is then the corresponding magnitude of the resultant, right? Because we just canceled whatever was on the um, horizontal direction, and therefore now we know the only thing that are acting here are the components downwards, right? And they're both in the same direction, they're both downwards, both the 400 and 200, so they're going to um, help each other out, sum instead of subtract. And basically the resultant force is just going to be the sum of this guy plus this guy. Okay, so the resultant force, which is vertical because we made it so, it's just going to be FAY plus FBY. That's as simple as that, right? So this is part A. And then part B will be the resultant force. That happens to be the sum of the Y because we made it so. And it will be the 257, which is the one that comes in from B, point 12, plus 153 just coming from A, 21. Um, and both these are both in pounds, so the answer is going to be in pounds. And this ends up being 410.33 approximately, uh, not approximately, exactly, pounds. And there you go. That's our part P. All right? So, you know, like I said, the whole thing here is around... Um, these guys, right? Force decomposition. This is super useful. It's going to be used many, many times in statics. It's going to be used many, many times afterwards in dynamics when we start doing more complex problems. Um, we can solve this using the force triangle. Okay, and we'll then do that. We're going to create a force triangle here. As you can probably anticipate, it's going to look... And I would have these two here. And we're going to put this one here, and we can create a force triangle like so. And we're going to solve that way too. All right. And you guys are going to decide which one is easy, the easiest. All right. So we'll see you in the next video. If this one was useful, um, consider leaving it, a like, uh, leaving it a like. If you have any questions, as put below. Just leave them in the comment section and we'll be sure to address them. And we'll talk soon.